Okay, any questions? Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Um, I've been following you for the past 10 years. 10 years. And I've been struggling uh, due to some of your teachings. Go ahead. Um, we live in a Western you know, society. And we believe that all of us here struggle with mortgages, houses. Without Payne River, we cannot get into that ladder. Without even getting into that ladder, we pay a stupid amount of rents. Due to your teachings, I myself prevented not to do it and let others not to do it either. Until then, today, people came up to me and said, some ulamas mentioned that one is permissible okay. due to, due to the, the society. Yeah. Now, what do you suggest on that? The question is, is it permissible for us to buy one house on interest with a mortgage from the bank? Not two or three, only the first one. That's the question. There are some fatwa to the effect that yes, you can, using of course the law of necessity, uh, Darora. Okay. A janaza was brought to the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam so that he could perform the Salatul Janaza over the body. So a janaza would be a dead body which has been given the ghusl and the kafan, the clothing for the salatul janaza. That is called a janaza. And now the prayer is called salatul janaza. He asked, did he leave any debts? Did he borrow any money and has not repaid the money as yet and did not leave the money to pay the debt? They said no. So he led the Salatul Janaza over that body. Then another Janaza was brought to Nabi Muhammad wasalam, for him to perform the Salatul Janaza. And he asked, did he leave any debts? Meaning, he borrowed money and he did not repay the money and he died with the debt and he did not leave the money to pay the debt. They said yes. The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam refused to perform the Salatul Janazah over that body. Yes. Because he died with the debt. Abu Qatada Al-Ansari Radiallahu ta'ala and who was standing by, he said, O Messenger of Allah, I will pay the debt. Then the Prophet والسلام, performed the Salatul Janazah over that body. Because now the money is there to pay the debt. A man came to the Prophet والسلام, and said, O Messenger of Allah, if I enter into the battlefield of jihad, and of course you know, jihad is not war to conquer the whole world and rule the whole world. Take that load of rubbish and throw it into a garbage bin. That's not jihad. Jihad is to struggle to liberate yourselves from aggression and oppression. So it's not an offensive weapon, it's a defensive weapon. So take that load of rubbish with a capital R and throw it in a garbage bin that you use jihad to rule the world. That is not Islam. I'm sorry that I have to raise my voice because they have ears and they still cannot hear. And they take Weapons and money from Santa Claus to go and wage a bogus jihad. So the man said, O Messenger of Allah, if I were to enter into the battlefield of jihad and I fight in the front row and I'm killed, will I enter into Jannah? And the Prophet said, Yes, you will enter into Jannah. And the man turned and he was leaving. And the Prophet said, come back, come back. Jibra'il alayhi salam has come, meaning Allah sent him right away. And he said, Allah has said, 
you will enter into Jannah on the condition that you die without a debt. So if you want to borrow money without interest, of course, 50, 100, 200, 300,000 dollars, pounds, to buy a house, make sure you have a friend who when you die, and before the janaza is performed, your friend will announce, I will pay the debt. Yes, make sure you have that before you sign the document. If you don't have a friend to declare, I will pay the debt, and you die with that debt, you cannot enter into Jannah. My first response. My second response is, Nabi Muhammad Wasallam has cussed. So if you borrow money on interest, you have the curse of the Prophet upon you. And if you have the curse of the Prophet upon you, you can perform your salat, it will not be accepted. Did you hear that? If you have the curse of a Prophet upon you, you can perform, you can fast in Ramadan, it will not be accepted. Did you hear that? If no one ever said that to you before, well, I'm here to say it tonight. If you have the curse of a Prophet upon you, you perform the Hajj, it will not be accepted. Yes. If you have the curse of a prophet upon you and you die, that's it. You finish. There's no hope for you. There is something called the law of darura or the law of necessity. And some scholars say that we have necessity here in the Western world because that's the only way we can get a house to borrow money on interest. Well then, let us go to Surah to Ali Imran and see what Allah says. It's a good thing, you know, sometimes to go in the Quran, open it and read, you know, good thing. But people are too busy nowadays. The angels are taking some people into Jahannam. And then the angels stop and they ask, Kya hua bhai? What happened? Fima kuntum. That you ended in this mess, you've been taken to Jahannam. What happened? So they reply and they say, Well, we didn't have a choice. We had no other option. There was nothing else we could do. Kunna mustadafina fill up. <laughs> and then the angels reply and they said, was Allah's earth not wide? That you could leave London, leave Britain and go somewhere on Allah's earth where you could live without borrowing money on interest? Alam takun abdullahi wasi'ah fatuhajiru fiha So this excuse was not accepted. Into the hellfire! This is Surah 2. Ali Imran. But yes, there are situations where the law of Darura will apply. Someone who is genuinely helpless, genuinely helpless, big family cannot travel nowhere, nobody to help him. So the law of Darura is if there is no food and you are starving to death, then you are allowed to eat lahmul khinzir, pork. Yeah, pork. This is the law of Darura. So they apply the law of Darura. Good. I lived in New York for 10 years, so I know. <laughs> so then I ask yourself, when you have to eat the pork to stay alive, do you have to fill the plate? Huh? Huh? It's not sorry. <laughs> or would you eat just the minimum to stay alive? That it? Arewa, look at the big house. You can go back to Rawalpindi and show off. Look at the big house I have. 
You fill the plate with pork. That's not the law of Darura. And when I eat the pork, I'm just eating it to stay alive. But they eat the pork and they lick their fingers. They lick their fingers. They're proud and happy with this house we bought. And number three, this is hypocrisy really. Number three, when you're eating the pork, you are always searching for food. So as soon as you could get food, you don't have to eat the pork anymore. I wish I could use the language I want to use, but it's a bit too harsh for you. Let me spare you that language. So the, these ignorant, let me use the term ignorant people. These ignorant people, they sign contract for 30 years of pork. Haji, 30 years of pork, whereas you're supposed to, while eating the pork, searching for food. And on the day you can get food to stop eating the pork, but no, you sign a document for 30 years of pork. So prepare yourself to answer in the grave, but it's not going to be easy. Next question. What I would like to advise, my advice to you, stay out of debt. Your grandfather would tell you the same thing. Your grandmother would tell you the same thing. We are a people who, if we have a debt, we cannot eat our food until we pay the debt. That's how we live. But you now, you sign a contract for 30 years of debt, Karza. And now if Pakistan borrows 12 billion from the IMF, which is what the Americans want them to do, who has to repay that 12 billion? Is it Imran Khan? Is it his ministers? Who has to pay it? The, cop, the people of Pakistan, the whole country, they have to repay it. So who it is who is borrowing the money? Pakistan cannot stand before Allah on Judgment Day, you know. Pakistan will not go to Jannah and Jahannam, no. No, no, it's people. So when you borrow that money from the IMF, it is the whole of Pakistan who are in, who is entering into riba. And so the curse of Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam will be upon the whole country. Thanks to the foolish governments that you've had in Pakistan from day one. Not only Pakistan, all the rest. So the best advice of all, number one, stay out of debt. And if ever you have to be in debt, try to make it short term and pay it off as soon as you can. Number two, never borrow money on interest. That is the road to slavery. Number three, if you have to rent in order to escape from riba, well, when you pay the rent, you're paying your landlord's riba for him. But the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, when you're faced with two evils and there is no escape, what must you do? What must you do? You must always choose the lesser evil. Always choose the lesser evil. So, to rent, is a lesser evil than to borrow the money on interest. Yes. Uh, finally, I didn't have time to deal with the subject of money. Make sure that you have your savings, whatever you have as savings, take it out of the bank and put it in real money, gold dinar and silver dirham. 
And uh, the prophet also said, if you have land, hold on to your land. And if you have animals, hold on to your animals. Hmm? So you can put your savings in land, you can put them in animals, because this is where you can get food to, to survive, to support your family. Next question. Yes. Yeah. When the bank pays interest to you, which is riba, what can you do with it? I can only tell you what I will do with it. Up to you to decide what you will do with it. I cannot use it for myself because Allah has prohibited that. If I consume even one dirham of riba, it is worse than committing zina 36 times. So I can't use it myself. I cannot give it to the poor. No. Because it's not only haram for me, it's haram for them as well. Yes. And when I give to the poor, the Prophet said, if you have a slave, give him to eat the food that you eat and give him to wear the clothes that you wear. This is our religion. <laughs> so I can't eat nice chicken biryani and give him rubbish. No, that's not our religion. So I cannot use it myself and I cannot give it to others. What can I do with it? What I would do is I'll invite all the family, including the children, and wait until it is dark and then show everybody the money uh, while we still have paper money you could do this uh, but you can't do it with electronic money <laughs> so i will show them the paper money and i say this is riba hmm? and then i say someone turn off the lights and then the room is in darkness and all the children are excited and I'll take the match and burn the money. When the children see that, it is going to be penetrating their hearts and they remember forever and ever and ever. Dada, but he burnt that money. This is terrible. Riva, this is what I do. Or you can bury it. Next question. Yeah. So in the UK, we have a number of Islamic banks. Yeah. Windows. Yeah. Very good. I'm getting very intelligent questions from this masjid. Yeah. I'm <laughs> very happy. Very happy tonight. Very intelligent questions, mashallah. We have in Islam halal transactions like uh, musharaka, which is a partnership and modaraba in which you have the capital and I have the business so you invest in my business uh, but you're not running the business so you get a share of the profits but you also share in the losses but there is a third transaction called morabaha morabaha and this is a transaction in which both the buyer and the seller are aware of the amount of profit. Like uh, I bought this car in that market and I brought it to this market and the car is being sold for 10,000 pounds in the market. But I am selling it for 11,000 pounds because I brought it from somewhere. I make a little profit. So, he has come to buy the car from me. He knows that I paid 10,000. He knows that. He knows that I'm making a profit of 1,000. He knows that. And he agrees to buy the car for 11,000. This is called a Morabaha transaction. Good. 
So now, the house is on sale for a hundred thousand. And the Islamic bank says, we'll buy the house and then we'll sell it to you and make a profit. And you will know the extent of the profit. Good. So we, we bought the house for a hundred thousand and we're going to sell it to you for three hundred thousand. So you know that the profit margin is two hundred thousand. Either you're buying it cash or you're not. If you're buying it cash, then it's a halal transaction. It is morabaha. But someone should make an appointment for you with a psychiatrist. Huh? To check out your head. <laughs> Why would you buy for 300,000 when it is available in the market for 100,000? The answer is, you're not buying it cash. No. You're buying it credit. So you're, you're paying the extra 200,000 because you're getting time. So money increasing over time is the most classical definition of riba. If this was a cash transaction, it would be halal. But in a credit transaction, the credit price must be the same as the cash price. Nabi Muhammad himself bought goods on credit. So a credit transaction is halal. But credit price cannot be higher than cash price. If credit price is higher than cash price, then the increase is because of time and that is riba. When you say that to an Islamic bank, it goes through one air and it goes out the other air and they say, we have fatwa. So we say, okay, wait for the grave. Wait for the grave. <laughs>